This is going to be a real simple one for a lot of people, but it's these simple ones that actually get the most views. Like when I fix the switch on my fan. Well, this one here, it's a table lamp, and we're going to fix this one. Check it out. Something like this I would normally not even bother with. I'm just uh, taking a look at this for one of my wife's clients, a woman in her 90s, and this, I guess, is part of her bedroom set or something, and she's got shades and so forth to fit on this light and it's not working and sometimes it turns on and other times it doesn't see what I mean so we have a switch problem on this so normally I would not even bother to, to film something like this but someone might want to know how to take apart one of these light sockets to either replace it or to try to repair it so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to undo the little key that operates it and we need to remove the lamp itself now I can pull some slack through here so that I can remove the socket itself these sockets typically I just have to squeeze the the uh, corners and it will pop apart and I should be able to lift it up so just want to make sure I've got some slack in the base here so that I can pull the, the lamp assembly out and the, the base itself will actually screw in as well but I need to remove the socket portion first and normally you just you squeeze it in a specific place to release the catch usually they're marked they'll say push sometimes not but we can just squeeze it or use a screwdriver a small flat bladed screwdriver to pop it open we just give it a bit of a pop like that and just push it and it'll pop apart now we can pull the light assembly out this is the light socket oh of course unplug the power before you do that that's a given we can take the light socket out and this switch itself here is going to be damaged internally. So what I need to do is I need to get a new light socket. So I'm going to go to the hardware store and just pick up a single, not a, not a three-way, but just a single light socket and we can replace this unit. As I don't think this one's going to come apart. Some of them you could actually take apart, but I don't think this one we're going to have any luck taking this one apart. But if I take the wires off... Let's see if I can get this switch apart. I don't think this one's going to come apart. This one looks to be riveted together. Some of them were held together with screws that you could actually take them apart, but this one here is riveted together. So we're not going to be able to take this one apart. Three stores later, I finally get a light socket that uh, should do the job. I say three stores later because the first two stores I went to, all they had was uh, three-way sockets and I didn't really want a three-way, I wanted a, just a, an on-off. Of course, this one here, the stupid, you gotta be kidding. It's not gonna come off, so I can screw this other one on. Yeah, that's gonna go over like a lead balloon. I may have to take this back. <laughs> we'll see if it'll unscrew. This is ridiculous. You would think that they would all unscrew, but uh, maybe not. Remember last week I did a review on my Philips Warm Glow with two of them that had gone out? Well, guess what? A third one has now gone out. What do you bet the other three fail within the next week or so? And I'll have six of them that died after exact, almost exactly five years. It'll be five years in like next week that they were in service. And of course, the you don't want to use that on it. Ah, oh, man. It's a problem when things are sealed up in a package is you can't see them until you, you actually get it home. 
that it might unscrew and I might be able to screw the other one on that's what the hope is is that this is going to unscrew Excellent. This one probably won't fit. I'll have to make it fit. I'll have to make it fit. You can do that by wrapping this up. Wrap it up with some tape. And that should uh, make it fit. So say I went to the local home of the handyman store and all they had was uh, ones with the only two or the only single on off was like a push switch back and forth or a plastic knob that would not come off like a different, completely different shape or three-way sockets now, I could have adapted a three-way socket, that would have worked but um, I didn't want to I tried to keep it the same as the original Of course, in my travels down to the to the Canadian Tire Store, which is where I got this, I ran into a homeless guy. He seems to have relocated down to the mall. I used to see the guy pushing his shopping cart to the local Tim Hortons and hanging out there. But, uh, now I see him down at the, at the big mall, sleeping on the sidewalk in the middle of the afternoon with all this stuff sitting in a cart. Had his lounge chair out, sleeping. Just so that I get enough strength. There we go. By George, I think it's going to work. All right, let's uh, reconnect the wires. I think this one will fit into this other base, just like the other one did, even though they're the same. Except for this one was rated at 660 watts and this one's 200 and 250, but I believe the, the bases here are exactly the same. So, it should fit. No problem. is a non-polarized socket or plug for the socket so I don't need to worry about polarity here if it was a polarized um, plug then I would uh, put the wider blade on the silver terminal which would be the neutral side but um, this one here is not polarized so it's not going to make any difference Alright, now let's just see whether I can uh, snap this together. I should put it on the new one. I think they're both the same. Now they both clip in exactly the same, so six of one and half a dozen of the other, they're both the same. So I'll use the original one. 
And then once I get this done, we'll take apart that other that other um, lamp socket. Let's see what what went what, what, what wrong with the switch. I'm sure it's just going to be the contacts are all pitted. But I know you guys are going to want to see it. Now i got to undo this right now because I have to screw this on after the fact just because I have to get it through the base here. So let's just take this off and put it back on. snapped in on both sides. Now I can thread in the switch again. Hopefully it will work without without it binding. The tape worked for the first time but of course after taking it off it uh, kind of bound up so rather than wrap it with tape I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to stick it into the uh, into the key and then thread it on. This way the threads will bite into the wire and it will probably give me a little better mechanical connection. At least that's the hope. So let's try this out. See if this works a little better than wrapping it with tape. Okay, that will work. Good. Okay, so now we've come up with a plan for how we're going to make this work. Because the tape, of course, worked, but I had to take it off to fit the, uh, the light socket into the... Uh, or put the switch into the, the actual lamp itself. So I had to take it apart again. I'll just reseat the, the switch, and I'll thread it in this time using a piece of, uh, it's just a piece of Cat5 wire, the bare conductor that I stripped off. So we'll reseat the switch, we'll click in, there we go. Okay, now I've got the key with the piece of wire that's threaded around it. I should be able to thread that on. Oh, I'm not quite straight here. Just get this a little bit straighter. Turn the lamp off and on. We'll just use the little snips to cut off the excess. And then snap the light in correctly. Pull the slack back. will be happy. So that's how you can retrofit um, one of these new sockets in even if the, the thread size is different.
just take a piece of a bare copper wire, such as from you know a piece of Cat5 or whatever, and just put it into the the larger opening for the keyway and wedge it in and use that and screw it down on there and that works like a jewel and it can be removed whereas if you were to glue that it would be permanent anyway this is working let's uh, take the old lap socket apart now and uh, see what went wrong with this one I'm sure it's just going to be pitted contacts but now that we've uh, fixed it I can now take this one apart because inquiring minds want to know what went wrong. I can just use my good old snips to cut through this because these things are razor sharp as you can clearly see. They're cutting through metal like it's soft butter. That's what I like about using these electrician's scissors, these Klein electrician's scissors, is that they are incredibly sharp they will cut metal, no problem at all, just like that. This is aluminum, but still, it's metal. Uh, it cuts it a lot easier than, say, trying to do it with uh, something like these, which is not really going to do much. Right? You're not cutting with side cutters, but with good, sharp electrician's scissors, or snips, is we call them in the industry. These are what uh, a telephone lineman would use or anybody that's working around copper wire for termination. Made by Klein. Relatively expensive. I've had these for, I've had it for a few years. I, I bought two pairs of them. I think they were like, it was like 45 bucks for two pairs, something like that. I've had them for a long time. And I got some, I got some of these at work, but the ones that they hand us out at work are junk. They're Chinese made ones. And, you know, they're, I mean, they, they rust. You get them wet once and they rust. But they're along the same line. It's just they're cheaper. That's what they hand out to us at work. I think the guys probably used to get the Klein snips because they refer to them as Klein snips. But uh, as I say, we haven't seen, we haven't actually seen the Klein brand for a few years. Use these ones to pop these rivets out. But yeah, the other day, homeless guy was uh, hanging out uh, out in front of an apartment block where I was, our condos that I was working at. And, somebody was giving him a hard time telling him to get off the property because he was camping out on private property and I guess making the residents a little bit worry that they were going to come home and find their place uh, ransacked. I don't think too many people trust this guy because he's, you know, shady looking character. And it's not something that we normally experience where I am, where I live. This is a, a relatively affluent area. So you don't normally see this. I'm sure you go down, you go to downtown Vancouver, the downtown east side. and Yeah, it's a pretty common sight, but around here, it's certainly not. So when you see someone in that, in that uh, situation, it's... Uh, I think for some people a little bit, a uh, little bit much, and they would rather have them not in their backyard. Well, he's not in their backyard now. He's down at the mall. I doubt that he'll be staying down there very long. I'm sure, the businesses will have something to say about that. Okay, so here's the old switch, all metal construction, and as you can see, guaranteed the new switch will not be metal. Well, it's got plastic and metal, but. Here's the actual switch contact itself. You can see how this works. If I get close up here. So I figured it would just be a cam that pushed the switch open and closed like you know conventional switches, but how wrong can I be? Because it's not. I'm just gonna clear off this sharp metal so I don't stab myself. So here's the switch itself, and look at how this one operates. actually got the metal piece right here on the the cam itself 
and as you turn it, it makes contact between one side and here. So it's a metal switch, it's a metal bar that goes all the way through. If we were to dissect this further, which I certainly can, I can take that out, and now you can see what's in here. Right, so so basically you've got the the line side coming in, and this is the side that went up to the light. And here's the two contacts inside, one on one side and one on the other. And this piece just turns, and as you can see, it's just a solid metal bar that goes all the way through. It's got a spring going in like that. And as you turn it, you're actually compressing the spring, which is what turns this. There's no physical connection between the shaft and the switch itself. It's done through the spring. The spring sits in there like that. As you turn it, the spring tension winds up until it overcomes the resistance and causes the contacts to spin. And I guess one of these contacts was just wearing out just a little bit, and when you turned it, it did not make the proper connection inside the switch. And this just sits down in here, just like that. Very simple, very simple switch. Just like that, it turns just like that. Anyway, that's uh, what one of these switches looks like now that I've replaced it. I'm sure this new one won't last as long as the original one. I can pretty much guarantee that. I'm, I'm sure the original Leviton was made in Canada, and then this one here, well, you can see where this one's made. This one's made in China. And it's also only rated at 250 watts, but the fixture itself is probably only rated at a 60 watt bulb. And, and yes, the, uh, the bulb that's in here is indeed a 60 watt incandescent bulb. Yes, you can still buy 60 watt incandescent bulbs here. Little good old Dollarama, they sell them there. Made in Mexico. It would almost be worth it for me to put the new cover on just so that the name can show. Because this one says Leviton, which we know it's. Obviously not a Leviton because I changed the guts, but kind of like some of the names that they come up with. Can you guys read it? It's a a zing ear, zing ear, probably pronounced zing ear. Lamp holder. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.